you tonight as we're going through the book of Colossians and, and how each one of the books, Paul was dealing with them getting back under the law, that he they got born again, they came into the covenant of grace, and of course, you know, the enemy is a legalist, and, and so the religious teachers came in, the legalistic teachers came in back, came in and began to teach them and get them back under the law. And you can't, you can't be under two covenants. When you get born again, you're in the covenant of grace. But if you go back to the law, you leave grace and you're back under the old covenant. And so understanding, you know, the old covenant, we, we need to understand, first of all, that what the Lord was showing me today was in the old covenant, all right, was that uh, we were under the, the first Adam, and because of Adam's sin, we were born. When we got born, we had a sin nature. So that's who we were. We had the sin nature. And it didn't matter how, how good we were and how much we performed. We were, in, in, we were in perfect beings because we had a sin nature. And that is just like when I mentioned about Job, that the you know, book of Job is two covenants, and that Job was 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 perfect in all ways, God said, but he had a sin nature because of the the sin of the first Adam, right? Because the Bible says all have sinned and came short of the glory. So he, no matter how perfect he was, he wasn't good enough. And so uh, the Bible says you break one of the law, you broke it all. And so he was under the curse. And curse Satan, the legalist, then, then that was that, that he that the law was given to show us we couldn't keep it. And, you know, then we see Job cry out for the grace of God, for a Messiah. Like, and the law, the law tells us we can't do it. We realize we need a redeemer. And so he gets, he realizes he needs a redeemer, cries out for that. And you see at the end of the book of Job, he's in the covenant of grace and he has a double portion of the blessing because the covenant of grace is a double portion. So in the old covenant now, it was given to, to show us that we couldn't keep it and that, uh, and it was an earner, and it was sin conscious, and it was blessings and cursing because you were in the blood covenant with God and you. But then in the new covenant, now several of the people in the old in the Old Testament had a revelation of grace. The Bible says that grace was preached to Abraham, and and it says that that Moses. Uh, saw the Messiah, it tells that in Hebrews chapter 11, and it says that David in Acts chapter 2 knew uh, the redemption power of the new covenant. And, and so we see that, you know, the, old, the, the, the life of, of, the, of the Bible is that we understand that God is the Alpha and Omega. He's the beginning and the end. So he began, he finished in the unseen, and then he began, and it was a lamb that was slain from the foundation of the earth. And so we have to understand that. So our new covenant is based on the second Adam. The second Adam, when you became born again, when you received Christ as your Savior, you right there at that moment received a brand new nature. You have the divine nature of God. You're made in the likeness and image of our Father God now, and that your nature is you are righteous because he was righteous. And so you are immediately righteous and holy, not based on what you do, but based on what Christ has done. Because at the cross of Calvary, we know he, he paid the sin of your own nature, took it at the cross, paid it in full, absorbed the whole curse, paid your past, present, and your future sins, and and so and through his death took back what Satan had stolen and resurrected in Christ, and now we are seated with him in the resurrection. And now we are under the blood covenant of Christ Jesus that was made between him and Father God. And so now I'm based on what Christ has done, and so I'm not an earner, I'm a receiver now, and I receive. So my 
So we have to understand that when we, we need to go back to when we got born again. I went back today at the age of 25. I got born again. When I got born again, at that very moment, I was the righteousness of God. That's who I am. And I am of his holiness. I am a spirit made in the likeness and image of God. That's who I am. I'm not my soul. I have a soul and I live in a body. But my spirit has the seed of God in it and there's no sin there. And so when God looks at me, he sees who I am. And I'm to let who I am flow through my soul and become a reality. Do we have that? So in the book of Colossians, Paul was dealing with him, getting back under the legalism, getting back under religion, and leaving the new covenant of grace, the works of Christ, the blessings of God that were already ours. And so we see him saying this, in the new covenant of grace, we are one with Christ, the word. That is the anointed word. We're born again of the word of God, the Bible says. So Colossians 3, 4 3, 1, and 4, and I love this translation, says, Christ's resurrection is your resurrection. So we need to believe and receive that the very resurrection of Christ, I was with him when he resurrected, and now in my born-again experience, that resurrection power is now mine. Hallelujah. That I'm to live a life of the supernatural now that is natural. And, and then it goes on to say this, and this is why we are to yearn for all, say all, that is above. That, that's what, that, for that's where Christ sits enthroned at the place of all power, all honor, and all authority. What is he saying? The Bible says that we are seated with Christ Jesus in heavenly places. We are resurrected in that, and we yearn to step into our place, and that in that place, I have all power because he's the head on the body. I have all honor, and I have all authority that was given to me now, and so what I got in him is what I'm to give away. I'm to give honor to others. I am to give the power, the resurrection power that sets them free from the things that have them in prison to bring them into the place of, of their, their freedom that Christ has given them, the life of blessings. And I am to walk in all authority that the enemy is under my feet. And he goes on to say this. He tells us this, okay? Yes, feast. Yes, feast. Feast is something you take pleasure in. You eat, you have a good time, you take your time, you enjoy. Feast on all the treasures in the heavenly realm. So he's saying all those treasures are something you don't earn. That's something that Christ earned. They're free gifts. God is not obligated because you earned it. Hallelujah. God is, he, Jesus earned it. And it's, and it's your gift. You don't earn a gift. You receive a gift. And he says, all the treasures of the heavenly realm and fill your thoughts with heavenly realities. So he tells you how. All right? And so we realize, uh, I want you to go back to when you had the old sinful nature uh, from the time you got birth in the natural. You had that old sinful nature, the Bible says, right? All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And so in that period of your time, the authority figures, what the world did to you, what life put on you, the, the baggage that, that came with, with that old sinful nature, the addictions that maybe were, were from the family, but all the worthlessness that came on you, all the rejection that came your life, all of the, the poverty that maybe you were in, all the abandonment, all of the not being wanted, all of that that said you're ugly, you're stupid, you're dumb, all of that was of the old place before we got born again and we have these ruts in our soul area remember we are a spirit made in his likeness and image we have a soul so he says fill your thoughts with heavenly reality what does that mean 
This means this, is that we have the mind of Christ in our spirit man. We have the thoughts of God. Now we are to take the supernatural of Christ Jesus and what he says we have. We're to take the thoughts of God, and we are to now receive that into our mind, to now bring forth the treasures of heaven, the realities of heaven, that our thoughts are filled with that because you, it, it, hallelujah, when you take those things, those things that God's given you in grace, they are filled with the energy and the power of God. They are filled with the activity of God, the supernatural power to now activate in you and to now produce after their kind in your life. What is that doing? That is going to produce new ruts in your mind. It's going to have the power to do that, and you're not using the old ruts, and so they just go away. And that's what he's saying, because the Bible says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed, right? Hebrews uh, 12, 2, be transformed by the what? The renewing of your mind, that you might prove what is a good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. And so he's saying, and then he goes on to say, and not with the distractions of this world world, right? I think it says that, right? Not of the distractions of the natural realm. So the distractions the enemy throws your way, the situations, don't give your thoughts to those distractions. Give your thoughts to what you have. You have the kingdom of God in you. And so now step into that realm and all of the Godhead dwells in you and everything in the kingdom, Jesus fulfilled that word and now they're yours in the kingdom. You enter into the rest and you receive his works to work through your life. Oh my goodness, shout for joy. That is exciting. So he's telling you, he's instructing you in your new covenant and how to walk in it. Try his Paul is used by the Holy Spirit to get them off of legalism, to get them away from that religion and back under the new covenant of grace. And so he goes on to say this, your crucifixion with Christ has severed the ties to this life. Oh my goodness, the Bible tells us in Galatians 2.20 that I've been crucified, you've been crucified with Christ Jesus, and we no longer live. What is he saying there? The old sinful nature has died. It doesn't live. So he's saying here in your crucifixion, you cut all ties to that old sinful nature. Now, that means that in God's kingdom, that old man does not live anymore. It's obsolete. It's been erased. It's gone. There's nothing there. But the enemy will bring you phantom pains. What does that mean? Phantom pains are pains of deception. They're lies. They tell you that old man is still alive. It tells you those things are still yours. It, it gets you to want to focus on that. That is not there anymore. And the only way they proved in, in, in medicine is to get us to adjust to the new life. Like if somebody gets a leg amputated, and that old man was amputated, right? Uh, the, the phantom pains come and tells them it's still there. The leg's still there. The toe itches. It's not there, but they're convinced it's there. Only when a person... Uh, uh, begins to decide it's gone, it's no more, and I'm focusing on my new uh, life that I'm in, can they move on? Well, the same in your born again experience. Until you focus on your new life in Christ Jesus and try to discover who you are because you're born of the word of God to submit to the word. The Bible says, humbly accept the word that is able to save your soul. Until you embrace that, you can't move on. You're stuck in the old person that isn't even there anymore and taking up your time. Oh my goodness, shout me down. That is good preaching there. Oh my gosh. Oh wow. I mean, I just, I tell you, I had so much fun in this 
this message here, and he goes on to say this, okay? So you're severed from that, but now your true life, your born-again experience is hidden away in God in Christ. It's hidden. But listen to this. And as Christ himself is seen for who he really is, what is this saying here? I'm hidden in God, in Christ, in the anointing, in the word. But God is light. So in that hiding place, in that tomb that I could be in, hallelujah, that I go hidden in him, in the resurrection, there's the light of God. And in that light is now showing me revelation, showing me the mysteries of Christ, showing me who he really is, who the word is, bringing life to me in the revelation of that word. And now I see him as who he really is. But then I see who I really am in him is revealed to me. Once I see him, I see myself. Hallelujah. I just want you to get that picture today. It was just huge as God gave me revelation. My old sinful nature was I couldn't earn righteousness. It's gone. But now, born again, who I am, I see up here, is righteous and holy and that doesn't change because that's who I am in him it's not based on what I do it's based on what he has done oh my goodness so that's the next part I want to talk about and it goes on to say for you are now one with him in his glory he's the word I'm in agreement so so we want to talk about our new person that we are and understanding it, okay? Uh, not that it's not about what I do now. It's about what Christ has done in the new covenant. And I'm feasting on all those treasures of the heavenly realm with what he's given me. And I'm embracing and meditating on them and wanting them to be, be produced in my life after their kind. And Philippians uh, 3, 9 We'll talk about this because now I am righteous in him. So what are the scriptures? Paul is tell, telling the Philippian in, in the, the book of Philippians, he's saying to them, okay, I, you know, I was the best of the Pharisee. I was my, my predig, my predigee was, was, was awesome, great, and, and it couldn't have been many better. But I count that rubbish. Because, you know, he had the sinful nature. It didn't matter how much he worked or performed. It didn't make him righteous. And so he said, I count that rubbish. I want that to be gone, no more, dead, because I want to gain Christ and be found in him. That uh, righteousness, that is not by the law, not by what I do. But what Christ has done, a righteousness from God, that is by faith. Receiving Christ Jesus now, by faith I'm righteous because of what Christ has done. Not what I do, but what Christ has done. I mean, I just want you to really receive that revelation for your own self. I want you to go back, and I want you to remember when you got saved. And at that moment, you were righteous. At that moment, you were holy. And at that moment, you had a new nature, the nature of God, the Bible says, divine nature. So whatever happened from there to here is not who you are. It's what, who he said you were when you got saved. That doesn't change. Did you get that? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness, I just, I myself, I went back when I was 25 years old. I received Christ as my Lord and Savior, and uh, I got right under the law. Well, you know, I was good at the law before I got saved. I thought, well, that's an A-plus for me because I was really one of those that would never break a rule. And, and so I thought, oh, I can handle this. I can do the law. Okay, so... And, but you can't satisfy the law. The, the law keeps demanding more and more and more from you. And uh, But so 
well, here, I'm putting myself under the law. But God said, no, you're a brand new person. You're already righteous apart from works. And, uh, and But you're trying to get righteous by what you do is filthy rags to me. That's what the word tells us. Our self-righteousness is filthy rags. And what did God, Jesus say about the, the one man that said, bowed his head and said, I'm not worthy to be here. I'm a sinner. And then the other one said, oh, I'm so, I'm such a great, I'm so glad that I'm so great. I tithe and I do this, my works, my works, and I'm so wonderful and I'm so perfect. And that self-righteousness was stinkiness to God. And he said, that man is not forgiven, but the other one is. What does that say to us? That it's stinky to God when we hold up our own self-righteousness, but when we hold up the righteousness of who Christ is and what he gave us and because of what he did, I am who I am, then God receives that because he's the only perfect one that could be righteous. Oh, my goodness. So you are righteous. Turn to your neighbor and say, you're righteous. You got Christ in your heart. You're righteous because of what he did. Hallelujah. So he says this in Romans 9, uh, 30 to 32. Christ, uh, Paul is dealing with this continuously because the law, the, the enemy loves to get you back under the old covenant, under the law, so he can put the curse on you and make your life miserable. So Paul is saying to them, now I want you to understand this, okay? He's saying, what shall I say then? The Gentiles, which were the heathens, they had the sin nature, okay? who did not pursue righteousness, they weren't trying to live under the law and religiously, right, have obtained to the righteousness, even the righteousness of faith. What happened? They heard about the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. They believed it. They received it. They became born again. And it was by faith, and they are righteous. It goes on to say, but Israel... Pursuing the law of righteousness, their good works, have not obtained the law of righteousness. So they wanted it. They were trying to be good enough. They were trying to fulfill all the rules, all the law. And he said they didn't get it because they did not pursue it, right? Why not, he said, because they did not seek it by faith that they needed to receive Christ Jesus, the, the righteous person, the, the righteous one. Okay, but they, they thought they had to earn it. But as they were, by works, they thought it was by works of the law, they didn't obtain it. So, and then he, in Romans 10.3, so he's trying to help the Jewish people, the Israelites at that time, he says, for they, being ignorant to God's righteousness, seeking to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted to the righteousness of God. And oh, this just spoke volumes to me. They can't submit to God's righteousness when they don't know God's righteousness. So they seek to establish their own. They can't submit. And so I thought to myself, well, that's, that's like me. I got born again. I'm already righteous, holy. But I didn't know I was already righteous. I didn't know I was already holy. I didn't know I had a new nature. And so I was then seeking to establish my own righteousness, my own good works, and I could not submit to God's righteousness. And so until I got a revelation of that, it seemed like every bad thing that could happen to you was knocking at my door. Right? But once I realized I'm in the covenant of grace, once I realized it's his righteousness, once I embraced my new nature, I was able to submit to his, and I stepped into the life of blessings and blessings and blessings. Oh, my goodness. And so what does it say here? Romans 3.21 says, But now a righteousness from God apart from the law is revealed. It's not connected. If it's the law, it's not grace, the Bible says. It's not his righteousness. If it's good works, it's not grace. 
It's not his righteousness because you can't put the two together. Romans uh, 4, 6 says, just as David, King David. Now, the Bible tells us in Acts chapter 2, like I said, he saw the resurrection of Christ. He saw it and believed it. And he said this because he saw it. Also this uh, describes the blessedness of a man to whom God imputes righteousness apart from works. Oh, my goodness. He, you know, he realized he's righteous apart from what he does. What he does not makes him righteous or unrighteous. He's all, you're already, that's who you are. I want you to get that tonight. Now, we know grace is not a license to sin. We know that in the covenant of grace, the, the law is written on our hearts. And the, and the power of the word now transforms our life, gives us the power and ability not to sin. The, the, the righteousness of Christ now in us now that the Bible tells us, Titus 2, 11 and 12, says that it mentors and teaches us the very grace of God that's the voice of the Holy Ghost that teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and live an upright, self-controlled life. Now, people that go out and live willful sin and they say, well, I'm in grace. Uh, they're not in grace. That's not grace. Grace gives you Christ's consciousness and uh, just works through our lives not to do those things because you don't even think about it. You're so thinking about Christ and the treasures that, that he's already given you. Praise God. Uh, these floors are hard to walk on. So praise God. I like the other ones, but don't tell nobody. All right? So anyway, I just need to end right now. So let's close in prayer, and let's just pray about this, okay? So Father God, now in the name of Jesus, I just pray those that have gotten back under the law, gotten back under religion, that, Lord, now they just repent. They call it sin. They, they command it to be gone in their life, that they're, they're cut free from all of that, that now they belong to Christ, and they receive now. Uh, uh, Lord, now the covenant of grace and the revelation of that grace now to come to them to, to now reveal to them what they have in the new covenant of grace, that Christ already did it. We are now receivers of what Christ has done. It's what he has done in Jesus' name. Father God, if they don't know Christ Jesus as their Savior uh, right now, they pray with me. Just pray with me. Dear Father God, I ask you to forgive me of my sins, and I ask your son Jesus, come into my heart, be my Lord and my Savior, in Jesus' name, amen. You that prayed that right now, you were passed from death to life. The old sinful nature is totally gone, and you are now in the new nature of God. You are a child of God. You are born again. Tell somebody what just happened and call that prayer line. God bless you. We are a 501c3. All of your donations are tax deductible. The wordforwinners.com ministry believes that your tithe belongs to your local church. Your financial donations to this ministry are received as offerings to support spreading the gospel of grace throughout the world. Go directly to the web to place your donation. The word for winners .com. Become a Grace Revelation Builder today.